tomato plants. I think it's one of the few plants that we literally throw the kitchen sink at to help alleviate issues. We give them tons, we give them eggs, we give them lime, you name it. So today's video, we're gonna look over what science says about using these methods and whether or not they're going to alleviate your issues. And if you are gonna use them, how to utilize them properly. The elephant in the room is very obviously blossom and rot. That is the reason for why this happens. I think every gardener's experienced blossom and rot at least once and then used Uncle Google to be able to find out the answers to what's going on. Now, I think you've all discovered that it's not a disease or a sickness of any capacity. It actually has to do with a lack of calcium. But how true is that statement? And is it misleading? Now, because you're on this channel, you probably like science. And that's why today's sponsor is Brilliant. If you don't know what Brilliant is, it is an app where you can actually help grow your knowledge in various different worlds. And Brilliant allows for that through a game-based competitive structure, which is wonderful. There's no memorization. It is literally gameplay. And it can be done on less than like 10 minutes a day. Now, this form of learning that Brilliant implements is been proven to be much more effective than our traditional way of learning through memorization and reading and watching. One of the best applications for this channel specifically is to be able to decipher the science behind everything and whether or not things are true, how to weight things properly, depending on what I've said or what other you know gardening channels have said. And Brilliant, again, actually has a segment of the app dedicated to that. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash gardening in Canada or scan the QR code that's on the screen. Or you can click the link in the description. You'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you so much, Brilliant, for sponsoring today's video. I do truly love your app and it helps me stay off TikTok, which is really important for my brain not to rot away. So, and let's get back to more science. So yes, blossom and rot is what we call a physiological disorder. And this physiological disorder is caused by lack of calcium. Now that can mean that your soil is low in calcium. We'll discuss that in a little bit, but can actually also be caused by other mechanisms of transport failing. For example, it could be an issue with the salt content between the inside of the root and the soil itself, or it can be caused by lack of water, which in turn obviously decreases the uptake of calcium. Now, I actually know this because in 2002, there was a study done. They actually discovered that lack of water was more likely to be the determining factor of whether or not you're going to have blossom and rot than the actual physical soil itself containing calcium. So you guys know that on this channel, we are incredibly nerdy. And so let's discuss the actual transport mechanisms of calcium from the soil into the plant. So the way that calcium moves is actually via mass flow. So it is exactly what it sounds like. It is the mass movement of water and nutrients through the barrier of the root into the root and ultimately into the plant. So without water, they're in an adequate quantity the soil solution cannot provide this. The other factor, particularly when it comes to flowers and fruits, such as tomatoes or peppers, is that unlike a lot of other nutrients in the plant, calcium can't necessarily be redirected, meaning every single individual tomato fruit is on its own journey through life. And just like anyone, if you are on a journey in life, anything that you do to yourself, tattoos for example, are going to stick with you forever. And blossom and rot is the same. So if your plants cannot take the calcium, then that is a mark on their record that has to be dealt with. And in some cases, can't be dealt with at all. Now, other than the inability to take it up, you can get what we call filtering down. And this is actually caused by excessive levels of nitrogen. If the plant ends up growing too rapidly, the leaves actually end up outcompeting the fruits for the calcium that is uptaken. So only a certain amount can be take uptaken when it comes to mass flow. And if the plant is putting on a ton of biomass, it's going to allocate that calcium to the leaves rather than to the fruit. And so the fruit loses out in this case. I actually know this because in 2004, there was a study done and it looked at rapid development of tomatoes and the effect it had on blossom and rot. And the two of them correlated perfectly. So the tactical tip here is not to over fertilize and to make sure there is a continual source of water. And this may mean having a dripper system, having a watering schedule, or making sure that a mulch is added to that soil surface. Now that we know kind of the intricate relationship between soil, calcium, and plant, let's discuss the three additives that are most popularly added to that soil system. Let's start with eggs, probably my least favorite. Everyone in the Geek Crew is laughing right now and was like, this woman has a vendetta 
against the eggs. And it's not just because I suffer from infertility. It's, it runs deeper than that, okay? They upset my tummy sometimes even. My number one goal in life is to make sure that people stop throwing eggs, whole or partial, into their gardens. That is like my life goal. Do eggs contain calcium? Yes, they actually contain a very specific form of calcium, calcium carbonate. This is the same calcium that you actually find in your soil, but it needs to be decomposed. And this decomposition process can take anywhere from two to three years. It can be sped up a little bit in more acidic soils, but marginally so. Can you add eggshells to your garden? Yes. Turns out there's no laws against it. And you guys know that on this channel. I don't care what you do. You can do whatever you want, but it doesn't treat the acute calcium needs of the plant, meaning it's not going to be available in any level of truly needed fashion for years to come. And if that doesn't convince you not to add eggs to the garden, here's what will. Mice, birds all love calcium. So if you have issues with voles, mice, or birds, and you put eggshells in your garden, that's your reason why. Okay, so the next grouping is actually lime and tums. And you're probably thinking, actually, why are you looping these two together? And it turns out that they actually pretty much perform the exact same in the soil system. So we're just going to lump them together for the sake of speed. Because if I can satisfy you guys faster, then my job is well done. So tums contains calcium carbonate, once again, sugars and binders. So is it a source of calcium? Yes, technically it is, but it also needs to still be dissolved. Now, of course, this is possible because we utilize it and eat it and it dissolves in our bellies. It will happen over time, but a single Tums is not enough to physically shift the soil chemistry. If you're looking to use it to make your soil more alkaline, for example, that's not going to happen. And it's not even going to really happen in that immediate area. Now, lime on the other hand, is a much cheaper version of calcium carbonate that will make your soil more alkaline and provide a source of calcium again as it begins to degrade much sooner and it will shift your pH, absolutely. But you need to keep in mind that dolomite lime also contains magnesium and magnesium can block the uptake of calcium if it's present in excess. I know, the internet told you calcium magnesium is the reason for your blossom and rod, and you can purchase calcium magnesium fertilizer mixes literally from the store. But if they are improperly balanced or your soil already has something going on with calcium magnesium and now you top it off with this other stuff, it just doesn't end the way you want it to. There's actually a study done on magnesium and calcium antagonism in the soil. It sounds crazy, but we also play psychiatrist to soil sometimes as soil scientists. So that's your warning not to let us get bored. Otherwise, we go cuckoo mid you. So the baseline here is actually not to add the calcium in the form of lime or tons unless you know for sure that is what you need or you're willing to test on a small scale to see if it alleviates the issue before doing the entire garden. So what does actually work with these bad boys? Well, science says that watering consist is important. One to one and a half inches, evenly applied every single week. The utilization of mulch to act as a buffer against moisture loss. A healthy root zone, of course, makes sense. So we don't want anything that's too compacted or too salty. And when it comes to fertilizer, we don't want to overdo the nitrogen and we only want to add a targeted level of calcium if we're showing absolute signs or testing that it is necessary. We don't want to throw that balance off because it's going to make the issue worse. If you're absolutely desperate, you can use a calcium foliar application of the spray. Of course, it's not going to alleviate a systemic issue with the soil, but it will alleviate the the problem, if it is present in the here and now, it treats that acute calcium deficiency that we were speaking about before. And I always like to back this stuff up with science. Otherwise, the comment section will be like, that's not true. 2005 study showing that. So suck it. So the moral of the story, as always, is to treat your soil nicely. Fix it up and the plants will treat you lovingly and well. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.